As a British man, Mr. Bean is one of my favorite fictional characters. One second. Delicious. So when I saw a video title, Mr. Bean could kill Superman, I was intrigued and a little bit confused. And so many people told me to watch this video. It's another wonderful video by Alex Lennon. Let's get into it. Mr. Bean's actor, Rowan Atkinson, was asked if he would ever make a movie titled Superman vs. Mr. Bean. He said no. When asked to elaborate on his answer, Atkinson famously responded, Superman could kill Mr. Bean very easily. Now, other than the fact that this was a- I don't think Superman would kill Mr. Bean. He's supposed to be like, what, the good guy? Mr. Bean is way too nice to be killed by Superman. Fake post I found on Instagram and- Oh no, it's fake? What? Oh, so he doesn't think that Superman could kill Mr. Bean very easily. What that actually was, was fake news. I never actually said this. It did get me thinking. Superman is pretty much invincible. He can fly. He's got laser vision. He can rebuild the Great Wall of China just by looking at it. But he's Why is one of Superman's most popular abilities? I loved it when he rebuilt the Great Wall of China in every episode of Superman. And in Man of Steel, when he saved the world by making the Wall of China. Just such an amazing moment. Basically a god compared to Mr. Bean. Bean, this weird little old man who is so lazy he'd rather shoot his own light bulb than get out of bed to turn it How off. did he get a the gun? Mr. Bean works so well is that the comedy is very physical. There's barely any language involved, so everyone from around the world can come together and laugh at him. Man, I used to love this show, and also, additionally, to a slightly lesser extent, the cartoon variation of the Mr. Bean show, which was also really this good. Incompetent, dim-witted character who gets scared of heights, is very socially awkward, hunts children for sport, you know? I was gonna say, the first two things I relate to. I was gonna be like, oh man, he's just like me. Then I got to the hunting children. Nope. Never mind. He's a silly little guy. At least that's what he is on the surface. After extensive analysis of Mr. Bean's behavior, I've uncovered a dark secret hiding in plain sight. Mr. Bean's okay. not the timid fool we all know and love, but instead a being of godlike power and intelligence. By presenting okay. my findings, okay. I'll be able to scientifically prove that Mr. Bean could in fact kill Superman even if you give Superman every power under the sun. Shapeshift, nice. time travel, nice. internet okay. walls of China. It still wouldn't be enough to even lay a finger on Mr. Bean. <laughs> Mr. Bean's godlike abilities, For okay? Adventures, Mr. Bean completes a variety of near impossible tasks without any prior knowledge or experience. Doesn't he like set spaghetti on fire by accident once? This man's improvisational skills are off the chart. In the first Mr. Bean movie, he finds himself in a hospital where he's mistaken for this master surgeon in charge of a life-saving operation. Mr. Bean, of course, has no idea what's going on and takes the whole thing as a joke, making goofy faces, supercharging a defibrillator and nearly shocking himself to death, you know, typical Mr. Bean behavior. However, when it comes to the operation, Mr. Bean performs a miracle from out of nowhere, using his bare hands to complete the surgery by himself without breaking a sweat. This seems highly improbable, but you know what? Everyone gets lucky now and again. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. In he passed the luck check. I think Mr. Bean invested all of his skill points into luck. And by investing all of your skill points, I mean taking all the skill points out of every other stat, strength, intelligence, perception, agility, bring those all down to one, and put it all in luck. And you know what? Luck builds work. Back to school, Mr. Bean, he attends a judo class. And as you can see from the color of their belts, Mr. Bean is a complete rookie and the instructor is an experienced fighter. Despite this, Mr. Bean still manages to get the upper hand and disposes of his opponent with ease, humiliating the guy in front of his students. Again, this seems pretty- He rolled him up like a karate Rito. But maybe the instructor was having an off day, you know? It happens. I can't remember what the fuck he's doing here, but I'll- leave it to <laughs> What is this? The most important part though is when he gets caught. Mr. Bean masterfully improvises to avoid suspicion and is thus free to continue torturing the poor man on the bathroom floor. Okay, so- I love the idea that the guy just walked in, saw a man halfway out of a bathroom stall and saw someone like tugging on him, trying to like pull him out and then goes, Oh no, 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 no. I was cleaning his shoes actually. Don't mind the fact that he's lying on the floor. I'm just giving him a little bit of spick and span, a little spruce up actually. What do all these clips have in common? Well, in each of these scenarios, Mr. Bean is just simply imitating those around him. When he performs the operation, he's just mimicking the actual medical professionals around him. When he's at the judo class, he's mimicking the instructor's moves. Oh, are we gonna say that Mr. Bean has this innate passive buff that allows him to not only blend in with the people that are around him, but harvest and drain all of the skills out of them as well, in the same way that Ben 10 would scan an alien and become the best version of the alien. He can scan the humans around him and become the peak version of what they do. 
Now that's a cool power, albeit in his own twisted way. And when the fine gentleman arrives at the bathroom door, it's clear by looking at him that this man takes no nonsense, he's a man of order, and so Mr Bean mimics that sense of authority and throws it back at him. One explanation could be that Mr Bean intensely studies those around him, and he can do so in such a small amount of time that he instantly assumes their skills. This would explain how he's able to succeed in such wild situations, he's just very observant and a fast learner. But that seems like a bit okay. of a stretch. Mr Bean isn't exactly the most observant person, in fact, half the reason he gets into these situations is because he's so oblivious to his surroundings. He's not a fast learner, he's just an idiot. Another explanation could be that Mr Bean has the subconscious, supernatural power to absorb the abilities of others. I think that this is an act that Mr Bean is putting on, and that actually he is a multi-dimensional entity. There is one in a group of books that I like, there's an author called Brandon Sanderson, and he has one character that kind of jumps between books, jumps between dimensions, and the whole time he's joking, he's telling funny stories, he's acting up a storm, it's, an, it's a character called Hoyd. And this character, very, very strong, very powerful, jumps between dimensions, but everyone just doesn't take him seriously because he just takes jokes, he doofs all the time, he's a little goofy guy. That's Mr. Bean. Also known as power stealing. Users can absorb powers from others, usually temporarily, and the victims naturally regain their lost power, but some users may be able to absorb powers permanently, according to powerlisting.fandom.com. Mr. Bean is clearly not aware of this power, but it would explain how he achieves all these miracles. Like I said before, Superman has the power of flight, laser vision, eating one billion burgers. Superman gets in the ring with Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean gets all of those powers as well. But once again, this seems a bit far-fetched, and there's no proper evidence that superpowers in the traditional sense exist in Mr. Bean's universe. Plus, there are some instances where this theory wouldn't really work. In The Curse of Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean loses his swimming trunks in a public pool, and there's no way of getting them back. When the pool closes and everyone is ordered to get out, Mr. Bean panics and hides himself underwater until the lifeguards leave. Fortunately, no one notices him, and he manages to escape the pool. Another victory for Mr. Bean. But look at him. It's fairly fucking obvious that he's right there. Even this lifeguard is complete. But he has the power of immense camouflage. He can hide in plain sight, and no one will know that he's there. Completely blind or just really shit at his job. This can't be the case though, as earlier in the same episode, the lifeguard is shown to be very observant and is quick to punish anyone who breaks the rules. Okay, so maybe it's just an inconsistency in the script, sure. But that would be a complete disservice to the writers. As well as playing Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson also co-writes for the show, and he's a smart guy. It seems impossible that he would let this sort of thing happen. Okay, so if it's not power stealing or bad writing, then what is it? How is he able to achieve all of these miracles? Well, after- Did he just defibrillate someone with random pliers? Metal pliers? Like a car jump cable? Through every episode, frame by frame, I've uncovered Mr. Bean's most overpowered ability of all. You see, yeah, slow down that one. Is just a theory. Is that Mr. Bean is able to manipulate probability fields, the metaphysical fields of chance, or luck, harnessing good fortune right, for right. himself. This is called nice. Tycho Kinesis. So yes, it is dumb luck, but by his own subconscious design. While this ability itself is still rather outlandish, probability is a real concept in mathematics and physics, so it would make sense in Mr. Bean's universe. Let's say Superman and Mr. Bean are fighting. It doesn't matter where, they could be fucking space for all I care. Using his powers of good fortune, Mr. Bean would just so happen to stumble upon some kryptonite. Maybe it's that <laughs> pink kryptonite that turns Superman gay. Yes, that did actually. What? No, there's not pink kryptonite that would turn Superman gay. That doesn't make any sense at all. Why? Why would the pink kryptonite turn him gay? I mean, I wouldn't. Why would they do that? That's so silly. Does it? Is it like pictures that I can? Oh, I mean. Oh, okay. I mean, it's it's like. Oh, sorry. I'm supposed. I'm watching. Sorry, reacting to the video. Whatever the scenario, Mr. Bean would be able to manipulate events in his favor, giving him a significant advantage over Superman. There's a Toyo in space. Seem to be in control of his powers. I don't know how the Tycho Kinesis is activated, but it seems to fail just as much as it succeeds. So there's no guarantee that Mr. Bean would come out on top. It's random chance, like using present in Pokemon, you have an equal and opposite chance to either heal or damage the Superman enemy. Superman charged himself with solar energy, flew way up in the sky, assembled infinite walls of Chinas around Mr. Bean so he couldn't escape. There'd be a good chance <laughs> that he'd win. Fortunately, the Tycho Kinesis isn't the only trick up Mr. Bean's sleeve. In Tea Off Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean is doing his laundry and accidentally gets stuck is in he wearing the a skirt? machines. While he's nice. in there, a woman turns the machine on, Mr. Bean starts spinning around, and we don't see what happens next. 
Now this looks like a dryer, but it gets the washed. Bean channel on YouTube says that it's a washing machine. Maybe in the Mr. Bean universe, people call washing machines dryers and dryers. We'll consider both options. Could you survive in a washing machine? Uh, no. Okay, no, so you, you drown. drown. You drown. Be crushed into little pieces by the intense spinning, or your body would fill up with these dangerous chemicals like liquid detergent. Alternatively, if it is a dryer, you'd probably suffer from severe burns and die of asphyxiation. Now, Quora once told me that I could inject my own poo into my veins and still survive, what? so it's not exactly what? the most reliable source. But using common sense- No, that, that can't be true. You would what would happen if I injected feces into a vein? Why in the world are you asking this? There are so many questions on Quora about injecting things in the veins. I suggest you get psychiatric help. You might not live long enough for a sepsis. It's much more solid. It would be effectively the same as an embolism and kill you on the spot. <laughs> what a way- Do you think anyone has ever actually died via that? There's no way. God, what a way to go. What a way to shed the mortal coil, to vacate this realm of reality because you had feces in your veins. I think it's safe to say that no human being or anything really could survive this without some sort of permanent damage. However, in the very next scene of the same episode, Mr. Bean appears totally fine with no sign of physical or psychological trauma. Okay, so he has really good regen. Chronological order. Maybe Mr. Bean did actually die and all subsequent episodes take place before that point. It's possible. It could be like a anthology show where all the episodes air out of order. But this argument kind of falls apart when you see that Mr. Bean has physically aged since that episode. Yes, it could be like Better Call Saul where the actor's age doesn't necessarily reflect the character's age and you just have to sort of ignore that the actor looks a lot older. But in Better Call Saul, they still make an effort to use older technology and references to that time period. Mr. Bean, on the other hand, has interacted with newer technology, and it's kind of obvious that years, if not decades, have passed since that fateful laundry outing. And so for Mr. Bean- <laughs> this, is, this is so much time to put into, can Mr. Bean survive a washing machine? This is such a funny video. To have survived this, his body would need to be way more durable than the average human. He would have to have invulnerability or near enough. What's more, he would also need the ability to breathe underwater and have the resistance to heat, which I guess would come under the immortality. However, we don't- that seemed like pretty easy passive buffs though. Like you don't really have to invest a whole lot of skill points into those trees to get those buffs. So I, I would say that you can get them pretty easily, especially doing the level that he is. I would imagine that Mr. Bean is probably, I would say at least level 70, maybe 75, 80. Don't know for sure how far this durability goes. His body may be durable, sure, but not unbreakable. With enough time and patience, Superman could possibly beat him. But this video's title, assuming I haven't changed it, is Mr. Bean could kill Superman. This is a fight to the death. And while Superman has killed in the comics and movies before, not counting Injustice, it's usually oh my God. he had no other choice and the victim was this super evil monster about to destroy the earth or some shit. But Mr. Bean is just a little man and Superman's a good guy. Having power is one thing, but having the balls to use it is another. Superman has the strength to disembowel a man in a matter of nanoseconds, but he chooses not to because he's morally inclined to do so. He values human life and will only take it if absolutely necessary. Mr. So he Bean, wouldn't kill Mr. Bean. Hand, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bean is a complete psychopath. Look what he does in this whole <laughs> time. What the fuck is this? Do you think this man values human life? Mr. Bean doesn't understand how people work, nor does he want to. He's perfectly content. I don't think Mr. Bean has much empathy for other humans. He's never really shown in the show to truly care about the well-being, happiness, and safety of others. So I think that given the option, Mr. Bean would probably kill someone. In his own little life, getting up to his own little weird adventures. This does, however, lead to a lot of antisocial behavior on his part, ranging from the awkward encounters to the straight up crimes against humanity. In Mind the Baby Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean is tasked with minding a baby after he accidentally kidnaps it from its mother. But Mr. Bean <laughs> wanted to have fun at the fair and he can't do both at the same time, right? No, which is why he leaves the baby unattended while he goes and has fun on a roller coaster. When the ride's about- Oh yeah, I mean, listen, he's in the Royal Mail car, that's fine. As long as he doesn't get out, it'll be fine. And if he gets out, then it's the baby's fault. The baby shouldn't have gone out if it didn't want to be it hurts. To start, he prevents a man from getting on and smiles about it afterwards because Mr. Bean takes joy in others' suffering. What's more, he displays <laughs> no emotion whatsoever during the ride and He's falls a psycho. asleep. Eventually, the baby's returned to its mother. No thanks to Psycho McGee over here. One could say that oh, he didn't mean to kidnap this child. You know, he tried his best to look after it, which would be plausible if he, he didn't tried his best to look after it after attaching it to a car and driving around haphazardly and then just depositing it in the nearest Royal Mail minivan. The exact same thing in the second Mr. Bean movie. He's clearly got a knack for this. Compare this to the time when Superman was 
also tasked with minding a baby after accidentally kidnapping it. Yes, believe it or not, there are just so many fucking Superman comics that for every scenario Mr. Bean's in, Superman has also been in that exact same situation like five times. Superman takes this child, who just so happens to be a telepathic alien, and vows to keep it safe no matter what. He tries to cheer it up, he sings it a lullaby to calm it down, and takes it to a church so that it can get the proper care that it needs. Even when he's delivered the child to the right people, Superman still promises Wait, he gave it to a church? Well, won't they just think it's like a demon? Dude, it's a telepathic alien child. If it starts doing telepathy in front of the nuns, they're like, uh-oh, exorcism time. ...to come back and check on it just in case. When some alien warlord with a glowing nipple shows up looking for the child, Superman fights tooth and nail to protect it, flying the warlord way up into the sky and throwing him into the depths of space. It's a rather heartwarming story. Okay, key things to note, <laughs> and you should really be writing this down. Superman will okay. go to great yep. lengths and put himself in danger for the safety of a child, and Mr. Bean kidnaps children and will actively uh -huh. neglect them for his own personal gain. Things Hold on, can you, can you repeat that? Episode, good night, Mr. Bean. Good it's night. Being rather symbolic, as we're now saying good night to the last shred of humanity he had left. Mr. No Bean more humans, for the hospital, right? But he's bored, and so to speed up the wait, he comes up with some psychotic ideas. First, he throws away a child's teddy bear so that they lose their place in the queue. Not the Owned. worst thing. We've all done it at one point or another, but what? perhaps the worst of- Wait, we, we, we've all done it. I I don't know about you guys. I haven't done that. I, I'm not against it. I think it's a good tactic that you can use, you know? Uh, use your enemy's tactics against them. And when you're in a queue, your enemy is whoever is in front of you. You Really? I have done it. I did. W. I've done it. I did. You haven't? Really? You're weird? Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I'm the weird one. I'm sorry. I guess the next time I, I need to go for a dentist checkup, should I just, should I just throw the grandma that's in front of me out of the window so that I get to go first or? Yeah, I guess I should get on that. Defense is when he fucking assaults a man, blames it on the guy next to him, which causes a fight between the two men. Also, he could move up one space in the queue. Fortunately, when he gets near the front of the queue, the lady in front is already leaving, and thank God, because from the look on his face, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck he was about to do to her. He was prepared to just go <clears throat> and just like snap the old lady's neck. <laughs> Mr. Bean gets a ticket with the number representing his place in the second queue. I remember this episode too. He sees that an elderly man is about to take the last seat, so he of course takes advantage of the man's disability and takes the seat for himself. He then notices the person next to him covered in bandages. This person has two broken legs, at least one broken arm, a broken neck. We don't know what's under these bandages. It's like that character from Spongebob that falls asleep by breaking both their arms but they could every be night. A burn victim, they could have no skin. Either way, their life is painfully shit. And so of course, Mr. Bean takes the absolute piss out of them. He laughs at them, he quite literally flexes on them, saying, hey, I can use my neck, I can use my legs. This is insane. And once again, Mr. I just, I forgot how insane this is. He's just, he looks at someone completely battered and unable to move and just starts laughing at them. He derives joy from others' misery. He then notices that the bandaged person is a full 24 places ahead of him in the queue, and so he swaps their tickets knowing full well they can't do anything about it. And to add insult to a already staggering number of injuries, Mr. Bean sees the kid next to him's ticket and adds a zero on the end so that the kid will miss their turn. Now this kid's number is already higher what? than Mr. Bean's. Mr. Bean has absolutely- It doesn't matter, the kid can't see the number anyway! He's got a fucking pad on his head! He can't even see the number! How would he even know when he's supposed to go anyway? Nothing to gain from this. On the YouTube video I was watching this scene on, the woman calls out number 23 at exactly 2 minutes and 43 seconds. She then calls out number 24 at 4 minutes and 11 seconds. That's 1 minute and 28 seconds for every number that is called. For simplicity's sake, let's call that 88 seconds. Now if we do a bit of mathematique, the kid's new number is 850. 850 take away 24 is 8 I love Mr. Bean maths, that's great. 826, that's 826 places to wait in the queue. So that's 826 places times by 88 seconds, account for the time dilation caused by the sheer gravity of Mr. Bean's balls, that's equal to 76,000... <laughs> 322.4 seconds. Mr. Bean has doomed this child to waiting 21 hours in the queue for no fucking reason. <laughs> See that sign over there? Radiotherapy. These are people who need proper medical assistance and Mr. Bean is preventing them from getting it. And for what? For fun. For He's funsies. He's a threat to public health. A complete dude, contrast I, to I love, Dude, that's kind of base though. That's kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's, yeah, it's bad and you shouldn't do that. But like, come on, it's, it's kind of funny he though. He inconveniences his own life to help other people. Look no further than All-Star Superman by Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely. You, you, 
might have heard of it, you know, it's not like it's one of the greatest Superman stories ever told. One of my favourite panels is from issue 10, where Superman volunteers to fly a bunch of hospital kids on a tour around the world, just to make their day a little bit better. This Aww. is just one of many examples That's nice. of that one story. That doesn't really seem like a good idea, because if you pick up a bus and fly it at the same speed over the ocean, as like a jet engine would be going. I don't think the bus has the structural integrity to handle that. In fact, I think the bus would crumple and everyone would die. In which he brightens people's days just for the sake of it. The last thing I want to touch on is, um, how would I put this? Mr. Bean's thirst for blood. Now, most of us have probably experienced having a mouse or a rat in our homes that we have to get rid of. You or I would probably spray like those scent things that gets rid of them, wait for the- They have seatbelts. Or if need be, use a mouse trap. What you typically wouldn't do is wait for Christmas Day to roll around, give the mouse its own little stocking with a little bit of cheese in it, and then use that generous gift as a ploy to smash its fucking brains in. Why go to the effort of having the custom-made stocking? The mouse doesn't give a shit, it's gonna meet its maker regardless. Clearly he gets off on this sadistic creativity. So Mr. Bean likes to kill animals. You know what's worse than that? That's so funny, dude. You got a fucking stocking. Wow, I forgot how good Mr. Bean actually was. Children. Mr. Bean is trying to use one of these coin machines, the one where you put the coins on the sh- I don't know fucking how it works. But he keeps losing, so he takes the frustration out on a little kid next to him by <laughs> suffocating him and throwing him to his death. Now there are two- Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, I don't, I don't think the kid's dead. That's really funny though. Some snot-nosed brat comes up and starts winning at a game in front of you, you're just like, yeah, fuck you, kid. Three things we can take away from this whole section here. Number one, Mr. Bean will cross the line that others won't. This means- Okay, I've decided that Mr. Bean is what happens when you give in to every single intrusive thought that you've had. Every single thought that's like, oh, I could do this right now. Like, oh yeah, I could like pull the hood over and then pull it back over his head so he can't see anything and push him on the ground. I could do that, but I'm not going to because I'm a normal functioning member of society. I could add a zero to the small child's doctor's number so that he has to wait 21 hours, but I'm not going to because I'm a normal human being. But what happens when you give in to every intrusive thought? <laughs> he can achieve his goals much more efficiently, even if it has to put others in harm's way. Ch so I would say that Mr. Bean is the most pure, unadulterated, uncensored version of humanity. He is humanity in its most pure form. Children, hospital patients, doesn't matter who dies as long as he gets what he wants. This gives him a tactical advantage over Superman, who actually values people's lives and will go out of his way to rescue them. And number two, it would appear that for every time Mr. Bean makes someone suffer, he grows more confident in his abilities. Therefore, you could say that Mr. Bean draws power from the pain that he causes. Okay, so we've got each side's abilities. We've examined their personalities, so we know how okay. you said abilities. We got a pretty good idea of how this fight is gonna go. Okay, so where would this fight take place? It can't take place in Metropolis, because otherwise Superman would have home court advantage. He knows his way around. Same goes for Mr. Bean in London. We could put them both in a nameless arena or a big field or a big empty space, but that'd be kind of boring and it would give me less to work with. So No, put them in Stoke-on-Trent. Number one reason is, uh, it is a British city, but it's not one that Mr. Bean is in. Also, it, it doesn't, it's already kind of a wasteland, so it doesn't mean it, doesn't matter if the battle lays waste the surrounding area, um, because it already is a wasteland. Let's make it completely fair, let's, uh, let's just choose a random place that neither of them are familiar with. New Jersey, fuck no. Brazil, fuck it, sure, they're, they're Brazil. in Brazil. <laughs> Why did Mr. Bean go to Brazil? Okay, so Mr. Bean and Superman are in Brazil. They're about to fight. They're okay. Fucking prep time, all right? Sorry. Sure. But prep time only really applies to Batman and Kevin McAllister. No, this fight true, is true. purely on instinct. Boom, boom, go fight, see what happens. None of that prep time, all right? I don't make the rules. We've got the fight set up, but there's one important thing that we're missing. What? Motivation. Superman's right. going to start lasering Mr. Bean's face off for no reason. He's going to need some justification for attacking him. You could make him bloodlusted. That's a very popular thing in the who would win community is, okay, well, usually you have a normal fight, but if you have a bloodlusted fight, it's because the characters immediately need to kill each other. They have to kill each other. They don't want to do anything else except kill each other. The thing that they want to do most in the world is do murder on that particular person. And like I said before, Mr. Bean's happy in his own little life, so he probably finds Superman boring. They need someone to fight for, someone or something that they care about. For Superman, that's easy. He'll fight for his friends, his family, the whole planet. You know, if Mr. Bean's doing something to endanger people, and as we've established, he does that all the time, then Superman will take action. But what does Mr. Bean, the unfeeling maniac who will suffocate children and deprive cancer patients of their treatment? 
happen. <laughs> what does a man like that care about? Despite being a complete psychopath, there are Teddy. two main things in Mr. Bean's life that he has Teddy. never shown the slightest bit of emotion towards. One is his car, as when it gets annihilated by a tank, <gasps> Mr. Bean no! is shown to be deeply troubled by its death and on the verge of tears. This Fun fact, this was actually the closest humanity ever got to being completely wiped out by Mr. Bean's unbridled rage. He managed to keep it dormant and hidden. But if it was unleashed, the planet Earth would immediately disintegrate. Second thing is Teddy. Mr. Bean Daddy. and Teddy are inseparable. They're best friends, soulmates even. Teddy is the only Bro, what person do? in his life what? who he genuinely cares for. One could argue that he also cares about his girlfriend, Irma. But looking back on it, the relationship is very one-sided and Mr. Bean spends half the time either terrorizing her or being overly possessive. So we'll leave her out of the equation for now. You could also say that he cares about the family that he stays with in the first movie, and while he does seem to like spending time with them, it's probably just a front to get a roof over his head. Anyways, Mr. Bean will do anything for <laughs> He's Teddy, manipulating them. his safety over actual humans. Hey, you guys didn't know that Mr. Bean had a girlfriend? That's like deep, I mean, it's not really deep Mr. Bean lore, but it's definitely in the Mr. Bean lore. Mr. Bean once went on a rampage, putting dozens of- Yes, chat, that means that Mr. Bean has more riz than you do, and also myself. Innocent civilians at risk, just so Teddy could get a slightly comfier armchair. When he's about to put Teddy in the washing machine, he gives him a straw to breathe so that he doesn't drown. On Aww. Christmas Day, he gives Teddy a brand new set of eyes. This is far more care than he ever gave his poor girlfriend, by the way. If something were to happen- Well, <laughs> I'm sure that if the worst were to actually occur, that Mr. Bean would also buy her a new set of eyes. They wouldn't work because they'd be buttons, but they'd still have them. To Teddy, Mr. Bean would do everything in his power to rescue him. Another thing to note is that despite all of Mr. Bean's efforts, Teddy still manages to suffer an overwhelming amount of injuries. Either he's drowned in paint, torn in half, decapitated, whatever it is, he seems to take after Mr. Bean in that he'll always appear totally unharmed in the next scene. Given the severity of his injuries, Teddy must have some sort of healing factor, similar to Wolverine and therefore can't be killed. Now that we've examined Mr. Bean's best friend, it's only <laughs> Teddy has a healing factor. <laughs> only fair that we do the same for Superman. His best friend is arguably Jimmy Olsen, a photographer for the deal. Oh, he's a ginger with blue eyes and freckles and a bit of a nerd. Am I Superman's best friend? Planet. He looks up to Superman as a role model and a parent figure, and he's even got this special watch that will send a high-pitched frequency that only Superman can hear if he ever needs to. <laughs> and help. the local Every dogs. Time the DC universe is destroyed and rebooted. Superman and Jimmy. Why does it say suicide watch? We find their way back together. It's like they were destined to become best friends. Like Mr. Bean with Teddy, Superman really cares for Jimmy and would do anything to keep him out of harm's way, except for the time he forced him to marry a gorilla and what? stopped him getting adopted, and then what? adopted Jimmy himself only to make his life hell. What? Confess, you killed Clark Kent, Jimmy! I found these clothes in the sea, now what did you do with his body? Wait, what do what you mean? He is Clark Kent, what? Superman knows I'm guilty. I'll have to kill him too with a special gamma weapon. Wh what? Hell, Jimmy, this gift you got me for Father's Day makes me sorry I ever adopted you as my son. I'll what? I'll destroy it to teach you a lesson. <laughs> Dude, that's... <laughs> He got him a dressing gown with a Superman logo on it, which is a really cool, thoughtful gift. And he says, it makes me sorry I adopted you. I'll have to destroy it in front of you to teach you a lesson. That's so funny. But Superman, I mean, dad, what, what did I ever do wrong? Superman, stop this crazy test. Let us share that water or we'll die. Sorry, Jimmy. The ground rules only allow one survivor. You are Aquaman. <laughs> Superman, an unknown enemy has materialized these former identities of mine and is now working a ghastly change on me. Save me. I can't, Jimmy. You're being punished by some super race for a crime against their world. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, apart from all that. He's the worst dad of all time. Mr. Bean is a better dad to Teddy than Jimmy or Superman is to Jimmy. Superman does actually care about him. And you know what? Jimmy can be a bit of a dick too. Sometimes. That was my origin story. The insult. He's faked being in a coma to learn Superman's secret identity. He's led a regiment of alien soldiers with toy guns into a suicide charge against Superman's wishes. Jimmy, you rat! You've revealed my Clark Kent identity to these criminals for money! Now they've chained me with kryptonite! Why did you betray me? Wait, is that his actual dialogue? That is the worst written dialogue I've ever heard in my life. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jimmy has also demonstrated his fair share of powers. Over the years, he's demonstrated the following abilities. Super speed, super intelligence, breathing fire, turning into a gorilla, turning into a woman, becoming a genie, becoming a hippie, becoming morbidly obese, yes, that's actually listed as one of his powers, monstrous beard growth, and giant turtle man. And oh my god! Wait, I want to learn those last two.
give the participants equal motivation to fight, each of their best friends will be trapped in an unbreakable cage. If Superman loses, Jimmy Olsen will be shot in the head. If Mr. Bean loses, Teddy will also be shot, but with an adamantium bullet. What's more, the there stakes won't be are any set. moral quandaries either. Teddy's death wouldn't conflict with Superman's morals, because to him, Teddy's just an inanimate object. And Mr. Bean wouldn't care about Jimmy either way, because, well, he's a fucking <laughs> Why would he? Hey, that's it. Time for the fight. Time to use all of the knowledge we've gathered thus far, all the rules we've established. Finally, we can see how on earth Mr. Bean would beat Superman. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. In Brazil, we're in Brazil, baby. It's Brazil time. Let's go. I'm ready for this. This is going to be sick. Uh, forgot something. Kind of important. What? Okay. It changes everything. What? Mr. Bean is an alien from outer space. Oh, how could you forget that? Of course, Mr. Bean's an alien from outer space. What do you mean? I don't know how we didn't see this coming, it's in the fucking title sequence. Every episode of Mr. Bean opens with this little segment. There's this swelling, sort of grand choir music playing as the titles roll, and it creates this ominous, almost angelic-like atmosphere which is quite far removed from the tone of- That's why he doesn't understand anything, that's why he doesn't speak, he doesn't know the language, that's why he doesn't understand how humans interact, because he's an alien! The actual show. But for the longest time, it was just a weird opening. It wasn't meant to be taken literally. He probably just fell out a window or off a roof or nope. maybe they're going for a religious That's angle. a UFO. Whatever the interpretation, there was never any elaboration on what this opening actually meant. It's a UFO. Until. Now, so far, I haven't mentioned the animated series. It's basically Great the same show. sort of thing as the live action stuff, with Rowan Atkinson providing the voice for Mr. Bean. While I don't think the animation really quite captures the magic of Atkinson's physical performance, the series is still quite iconic in its own right, and there are a number of really good episodes which expand on the Mr. Bean lore, if you will. In the episode Double Trouble, Mr. Bean is confused when he finds a car identical to his own. He writes it off as a coincidence until he sees the car's owner, another Mr. Bean. After convincing himself <laughs> that he's not having another I remember this episode. episode, Mr. Bean pursues his doppelganger in an intense, action-filled car chase. When he finally catches up with him, the other Mr. Bean is equally as confused. They have the same handkerchief, the same hair comb, the same underwear. The only major difference <gasps> is that this other Mr. No Bean teddy. doesn't have a teddy, but he has instead a, a tall penguin. penguin. And it turns out that his name isn't Mr. Bean, instead Mr. Pod. Mr. Bean and Mr. Pod, Pod become best Oh, Bean Pod, very cute. Friends, and they go to Mr. Bean's house together. However, Mr. Bean- Oh, do you think that Mr. Bean and Mr. Po so they, there's there's one girl, so, and, and tech, they're both with the one girl, do you- He's not very pleased when Mr. Pod tries to steal his girlfriend. Pod takes her away in his car and takes- why steal when you can share? It's a field where there's just a fucking UFO just sitting there. We then see <laughs> that the spacecraft is filled with dozens of creatures who also look like Mr. Bean. Having How did I forget this episode? Pods to the field, Mr. Bean does not seem phased by the fact that there are alien clones of him and is perfectly happy just ditching his life to go fly away in their spaceship. Before they take flight, however, the Mr. Bean clones kick him out of the spaceship, mirroring what? the live-action opening titles while playing the same angelic music. He must be in exile, like Napoleon Bonaparte from the years of old. Mr. Bean is probably a powerful military conqueror that was exiled for crimes against humanity. Or I guess, not humanity, more like Bean-anity? Bean-anity. And then was exiled to Earth to live out their sentence. If we treat the animated series as canon to the live action series, it does raise a number of questions. As established in the episode, these Mr. Bean clones freely roam around the same places as Mr. Bean does. So how do we know that all these live action appearances are in fact the real Mr. Bean. And is there even such thing as a real Mr. Bean? Sure, they might have different names, but they're identical to one another. They behave the same, they drive the same- He broke the Bean Eva convention. That's a really good- <laughs> that's good. They are, they more or less have the same possessions. If we say Mr. Bean versus Superman, is it just one of them, or all of them? If one Mr. Bean dies, could we replace him with another one? Technically that wouldn't be him, but- Spiritually, it would because I think there's a term in like who would fightology when you take characters and put them against each other called a composite version of a character, which is essentially every version of that character in one. So they can use every ability that any one of their individual characters can use. If one Mr. Bean can do a backflip and another Mr. Bean can do a front flip, you put the composite version together, they can backflip and front flip at the same time. So we have composite Mr. Bean versus composite Superman, is what we have to do here, so right? I don't even know who's the 
original. Sure, we can tell the difference based on what toy he has. If he has Teddy, then he's our guy, right? But Teddy's not in every episode of the live action series, in fact he's only in a rare few. So who's to say that this guy is the main Mr Bean? Half the episodes could be following Mr Pod and we wouldn't know it. In this shot, I count 16 Mr Beans. That we know about! Where do these guys come from? Is there some sort of alien factory chugging them out every second, producing Mr. Beans endlessly? Is there a planet filled with these Mr. Bean clones living peacefully on the other side of the universe in harmony? Depending on where- And their Beanopolis? From, there could be infinite Mr. Beans. And so, in a sense, Mr. Bean can never die. A self sustain I think that we are all part of a super advanced human race galaxy that we are just not a part of. Like, in Warhammer 40k, there are planets of humans that are detached from the Imperium, which is the main human empire. They are completely detached, they don't know about the Imperium, but the Imperium is super advanced, they have a lot of technology, they can kill things, etc, etc. What if the Mr. Bean planet is the true human race? The space-age human race that went into, out into the galaxy and populated everything? Whereas Earth was simply an, a breeding ground, a place to put a little bit of human species to see what would happen if they were just left in a vacuum. And we're being monitored by the advanced human race that has out there in the galaxy. And now that I've said that, I might get sniped at any point for releasing too much information. Now we're getting into conspiracy theories, but I think that would be a really cool thing if that were true. cycle of incompetency, sociopathic behavior, and infinite armchair vehicular killing machines. Superman may be physically invulnerable, but conceptually, far from it. He's just one man, and men can be beaten. But Mr. Bean is more than just a man. He's an idea, and you can't kill an idea. You can't kill ide ideology. You can kill an idea if you murder everyone that knows the idea. Therefore, the information is no longer available. But then, people will eventually come to that same conclusion again. Hello to the people who've just skipped to this point in the video. I guess the chapter titles are there for a reason, but fuck yourself. I would never skip. <laughs> True, I would never skip. I don't even skip sponsors. Power prepared to fight the it's battle time. And for some reason, Superman and Mr. Bean have already lost their legs. Only one will survive. Teddy and Jimmy are placed with an eye shot of the fight, trapped in their unbreakable cage. Their lives hang in the balance. Imagine being Jimmy in that cage and having the same worth as an inanimate teddy bear. Three, two. Oh, one. it's about to begin. Here we go. Stop, says Superman. What? Now, as we've established, Superman will only kill if absolutely necessary, and so he wants to find another way. Listen, I know I might look like some unfeeling god who thinks they're above everyone, but I was raised here on Earth, just like you. I know we're both in the same boat right now, so if we can get to understand one another, maybe we can work together and put a stop to whoever's behind this. Unfortunately, Mr. Bean is oblivious to Superman's words and is more just confused as to how he got here. By now, a reasonably <laughs> large crowd has built up. Onlookers are curious as to why these two godly beings are fighting in Brazil of all places. These two Mr. godly Bean beings! feel intimidated by the crowd and starts to panic. Unsure what Mr. Bean will do if he loses control, Superman spawns in a great wall of China, blocking the crowd's feet. Meanwhile, an escape is attempted. While Teddy has accepted Good his plan, feet, Jimmy is determined to break his way out. If there's anything Superman has taught him, it's that you can always find a way. What? Nothing. The cage is fireproof. But Jimmy- Jimmy has fire mouth? Was that one of the old abilities? I guess he it was. He give up that easily, and he's got plenty of other powers. Naturally, he activates his powers of extreme obesity. <laughs> no luck. Not only so has this attempt failed, Jimmy now can't seem to turn back, and is stuck with his face pressed up against the cage. God's the sake. waves caused by the Wall of China has significantly weakened nearby surfaces, and the increased weight in the cage has caused the ground underneath to crumble. So uh -oh. the cage Here we go. into the sewer below, flipping it upside down and covering it in a mountain of rubble. Not God's good. sake, Jimmy. Back to Superman and Mr. Bean. Or See, Teddy would never do something as stupid as that. Teddy just wanted to sit tight and let things play out, but Jimmy had to jump into action like he was some kind of superhero himself. Superman, because Mr. Bean is now missing. Superman scans his surroundings for any sign of his opponent, but to no avail. That's weird, he's not picking up on anything with his super hearing, nor does he- ah! Superman falls down, clutching his chest in agony. You see, while Mr. Bean was underwater, he stumbled across some kryptonite and used it to fashion <laughs> a makeshift spear. Pair this with Mr. Bean's sporadic, violent outbursts, and you've got yourself a Kryptonian killing machine. Significantly weakened, it appears Superman is done for, but he feels strange. It's not just the pain, it's something he's never felt before. It's almost like... it's almost like he... Hey, are you alright down there? 
A concerned Brazilian citizen has spotted Jimmy's leg poking out from the rubble. Hey, hey I think there's a guy stuck in the sewer! Most people are still focused on the Superman and Mr. Bean fight, but a small, curious crowd has built up around the hole. Some people start taking pictures and sharing them around on social- Just like my mother died Lameo. That's awesome. Media. What are you doing? Can't you see this man needs help? Uh, he's probably dead anyway. Yeah, well, let's have a fun, man. Hey, did you hear about that space fish? The what? There's this new species of fish that swims around space. I saw it on Nat Geographic. How is this relevant? Just then, a man steps forward. Hey, my name is Matteo. I live just across the road from here with my beautiful wife and two kids. What the fuck is Everyone going on? Out of the way. What is going that on? Man needs my help. Mateo's what is happening? It's simple. He will lower himself down the hole, clear the rubble, and use a rope to haul them back up. It's foolproof. Matteo's wife tries to stop him, asking him to think of the kids. If something happens to him while he's in the sewer, his children will grow up without a father. Oh no, I have loved you for 25 years, but not once in those 25 years have I ever backed down from doing the right thing. The clock is ticking. While Teddy is immune to all damage, Jimmy does not have such a luxury. All of the blood rushing to his head has caused severe intracranial pressure, and in 20 <laughs> minutes, he will be dead. And so Jimmy really is the L sidekick in this situation, isn't Mateo he? Mateo is lowered into the sewer, armed with only a rope and his pride. I just spent a little bit trying to figure out who Mateo was because I had no idea. I guess this is just some Brazilian guy. Like, it really is just a guy. Don't you worry, my friend. I'm gonna get you out of there. Thanks to all of the photos on Let's social media, the mysterious leg in the sewer has become an international news story, attracting the attention of people all across the world, including the Brazilian government. You oh, see, no. back in 2017, oh Jesus Christ, not the Brazilian government, not the old, not Bolsonaro. The government had closed off a number of. Not that he's the president anymore, but when he was the president, that wouldn't be a good situation. Sewers in the city, as most of the sewage had been rerouted to a brand new treatment plant. This treatment plant was called Ereseo Verde, which literally translates to the green boner. This is true. Nice. Enough. But since then, they've been using the empty sewers to store various government projects, including nuclear what? weapons. What? The government decides that they can't can't risk the Brazilian public finding out about these weapons, and so they dispatch a spy to shut down the rescue attempt. Meanwhile, back to whatever Superman and Mr. Bean are doing. What is Mr. going Bean on? has got bored of the fight and is now rampaging through the city on his trusty armchair vehicle. Superman, How did he get that? still recovering from his wound, chases Mr. Bean through the city as various civilians are mowed down. Superman stops to make sure every civilian is okay, but this gives Mr. Bean a massive advantage. For every civilian Superman checks on, another five more are run down. That's it. Superman has had enough. It's clear that Mr. Bean has no regard for human life, and all that matters now is taking him out. Superman races forward, grabs Mr. Bean, and throws him into the depths of space. But Mr. Bean <laughs> activates his tychokinesis and bounces off a conveniently positioned rock <laughs> orbiting Earth, hurtling back towards Superman. The two spin around, fighting to the death. But there it is again. That's also, keep in mind, uh, Mr. Bean does not actually need to breathe, as we saw in the swimming episode. He can last indefinitely underwater without feeling any damage or pressure at all. Strange feeling. It's not pain, it's more closer to jealousy or lust. Wait. What? You're not colorblind, are you? Uh, yeah. Why? Because I don't think that was green kryptonite. What do you mean? Yeah, that's Jesus fine. Christ. Mateo has cleared most of the- Superman got stabbed with a pink kryptonite, and now he wants to have sex with Mr. Bean. Nice. Top of the cage, his hands covered in cuts and bruises. Mateo! He's now passed out, but rescue is imminent, as Mateo ties the rope around the top of the cage and tells everyone to pull as hard as they can. But Just the nukes- they're making some progress, the government spy pulls out a knife and slashes the rope. What? <gasps> no! No! Mateo! Why? Asks Superman. Why are people so keen to see us fight? Is it merely just an extension of one's own anger and insecurity? Does directing one's pain towards a trivial fight between two fictional characters distract oneself from the cruelty and pain of one's own suffering? What? I think the world would be a much better place if we just learned to be patient with one another. To not jump to the extremities and judgments, and instead realize that most conflict between different groups is specifically engineered to distract us from the real societal problems. Oh my god, he's describing why culture war is bad. The two godlike beings float in silence, reflecting on their newfound approach to life. Meanwhile, a second rope is lowered into the sewer. Mateo's wife Mateo. goes down after him, trying to break him free, but Mateo refuses. He insists that the main priority is still Jimmy, and tells her to get him out first. What a legend. Touched by her husband's selfless act, Anna ties the second rope to the cage, and the crowd pulls once more. It's difficult at first, but the, spy. the group is driven by this sense of resilience and community and defiance against the government, and they pull the damn rope as hard as they can. We're doing it! We're fucking doing it! Can I tell you something? Yeah, go ahead. 
all my life I've never had a job. I've never had a lot of friends. Wait, Mr. Bean doesn't speak. I've always felt like an outsider, a spectator to society, rather than a participant. For a long time I thought I was okay with this, because I was content with who I was. But then I discovered that I belonged to an infinite race of identical beings. I tried to play it off, like I was totally cool with it, but in reality I've never been more terrified. Is everything I am, or ever will be, simply programmed into me? Everything that I thought made me special, maybe unique? Does that mean nothing anymore? Is you know, this character development? More of a wake-up call, because for all of my life, I've never truly been allowed to be myself. I've always stayed true to who I am, and everyone has laughed at me. My life is nothing but a joke. Yeah, but you are a bit of a psycho, let's be honest. I mean, you're bullying kids, you're bullying people at theme parks, you're bullying people at doctors. Just being an ass for no reason. Honestly, Mr. Bean, if the true person who is truly who you are, that much of a psycho, should we really let you just be who you are? Should you be true to your inner self or should you try to change? Well, that is the question. Even now, I bet my sincerity will be cut off by some clever bit that makes me look like some incompetent fool. Do you know what that does to my sense of self-worth? My sense of identity? I've never lived for other people. I've always put myself first in every situation. But if I'm now starting to doubt myself, if I have no grasp on who I am or why I am, then what is there to live for? What am I to do? Oh, oh there's, a, there's a... There's a... That's a fucking space fish from before. <laughs> Oh god, oh god, how is it gonna end? Oh god, is Superman gonna kill Jimmy by accident? The spy is back as well! Mateo! Watch out, Mateo! No! Wait. Oh. No, no, not the- not the fat man! Oh god. Jesus Christ. He did it! Okay, to be fair, Superman probably doesn't get killed by a nuke though. But Mateo is dead! Mr. Bean versus the multiverse! Once again, what? hello to all the people who uh, skipped to this point. Fuck yourself. Now that we've scientifically proven that Mr. Bean could in fact kill Superman, why stop there? And so I asked my wonderful audience, which other characters could Mr. Bean take in a fight? And so I've handpicked the best answers and we're gonna debate them. Okay, let's begin with- Teddy is fine, that's all that matters. Mate, Teddy just got nuclear bomb explosioned. <laughs> Teddy is definitely not fine. Thank you. It's a Mateo is dead. Time. If you claim a certain character to be powerful, there'll always be that one person in the back asking, can they beat Goku though? In case you True. haven't watched Dragon Ball, Goku is immensely powerful. He's one of the most powerful beings in the multiverse. His power level has reached 150 Facts. million, whatever the fuck that means. So how can Mr. B- Hey, he, he reached 150 million the first time he turned Super Saiyan. After that, they stopped counting the power level because the numbers were getting too high. The, he He's so strong that they stopped using a feature of the show because he's just too strong. Defeat a being of such indomitable strength. Well, Goku does have a couple weaknesses. First, he's, he's hot. rather naive, so it's quite easy to catch him off guard. He's also got a severe phobia of needles, but this was only really added in the anime and never mentioned in the original manga, so I'm not sure- Oh, non-canon. What some people overlook, however, is his vulnerability to laxatives. In the what? episode Goku vs. Sky Dragon, Goku is betrayed by one of his friends, who spikes his food with laxatives. This gives <laughs> what? Goku severe stomach problems during one of his battles, and he gets the shit kicked out of him. Funnily enough, in the first Mr. Bean movie, Mr. Bean makes use of laxatives during a heist, spiking a security guard's coffee with a lethal dose of them. If Mr. Bean lethal? catch Goku off guard, did he kill him? Feed him laxatives by any means necessary, then Goku would just shit himself to death. Another victory <laughs> for the Bean. Uh, Wario. Wario is- No, listen. Goku may be weak to uh, laxatives when he's in his base kid form, but if he went Super Saiyan, he would Super Saiyan the laxatives out of his body through sheer force of will. Wario's arts nemesis, appearing in lots of different Super Mario games and his own titles as well, such as Wario Land, Wario's Woods, WarioWare Smooth Moves, and Wario Master of Disguise. You might know him from his famous catchphrase, uh, it's a me, Wario. But don't let his charming appearance deceive you. For Damn, he's Wario got biceps. Superhuman strength. I think Wario is a strong man. I think he's like really, really, really strong. And can even cause small earthquakes. He can also charge up his farts, which are nice. so powerful they create a nuclear explosion. What's more, in the game manual for Wario Land 2, Wario states that he is immortal. This is yes? because he just doesn't feel like dying. However, <laughs> Wario's intelligence is not on par with his level of strength, which means he is easily tricked by others. He is easily influenced by money or getting revenge against Mario. He's a little greedy. So, much so that he'll turn a blind eye to common sense and self-preservation. 
Mr. Bean could just convince Wario that he does want to die, thus removing his immortality, and Wario's rage makes him very oblivious to his surroundings, so Mr. Bean could easily sneak up on him and take him out. Uh, Popeye. Popeye's another one of these characters protected by cartoon logic. Dude, he Popeye is awesome. I love Popeye. He can Popeye's the reason that I like spinach so much. Dude, he, he gobbles a can of spinach and gets super strength. That's incredible. Best superpower in the world. Move at near light speed, flying to the moon in like under two seconds. It what? Like Mr. Bean has met his match. Unfortunately for Popeye, his weakness comes from the reliance on the very thing that gives him power. Mr. Bean would just have to eat all of the spinach in the world, thus depriving Popeye of his power source. Now I don't think that Mr. Bean would do that though. Mr. Bean does not strike me as a man that enjoys spinach. I think that he would not eat something that he does not enjoy, therefore he would not touch the spinach and allow Popeye to power up to his final form. But don't get me wrong, this is a near impossible task that would take years to accomplish. But as we've seen before, Mr. Bean will go to great lengths to accomplish his goals and he has the power of luck on his side. After that, Mr. Bean could probably just take him out with a gun. Uh, LeBron James. LeBron? Okay, so LeBron James is considered one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He's in the top tier of athletes in the world. But the Olympics is a competition consisting of the greatest athletes in the world. Mr. Bean famously won the Olympics in London 2012. LeBron James has never won the Olympics. Mr. Bean wins. Someone's True, that means Mr. Bean is a better athlete than LeBron. That's so facts. The rat from Avengers Endgame. Uh, if you're one of the two people who haven't seen Avengers Endgame, a random rat steps on the button which releases Ant-Man from the Quantum Realm, who in turn provides the necessary knowledge for the Avengers to beat Thanos, thus resurrecting half the universe. Okay, to be fair, that's one of the dumbest fucking plot points I've ever seen in my entire life. The entire reason that any of Endgame ever happens is because a rat accidentally falls on the right button that releases him from the Quantum Realm. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And this is a movie about time travel. You can't make a movie about time travel not be dumb. Despite the rat uh, indirectly saving trillions of people, Mr. Bean would still eviscerate it without a second thought. Now, True, this looks he is like a, rat. a common brown rat, or Ratus Norvegicus for the taxonomists out there. So there's nothing remotely special about it. And as shown before, Mr. Yeah. Bean takes a. Mr. Beast already has anti rat feats built in, so clearly this wouldn't be an particular issue. Particular liking to killing rodents. So he'd likely come up with some twisted saw trap maze for the rat to crawl around. Uh, Manny Hefley, for fuck's sake. Manny is the younger brother of what the main that? character Greg Hefley in the book slash actually fucking masterpiece of a movie series, Diary of the Wimpy Kid. Manny Wait, is really? an annoying- Oh, my brother used to wa love this series. What the- Dude, what is with his teeth? Shit, and words cannot describe the collective hatred everyone who knows this series feels towards him. However, like Mr. Bean, Manny also pulls a series of complete miracles from out of nowhere, leading people to believe he's some being of godlike intelligence. Manny what? is only three years old and yet can build an entire house on his own. He can speak fluent Spanish out of nowhere, he's a genius entrepreneur, but like what? Manny, Mr. Bean is also a master architect. He's pretty much created his own version of English, which should really be considered its own language at this point. One only needs to watch a single Mr. Bean episode to see that his intelligence is at least equal to Manny's. Also, Manny is a kid. And as we've established before, Mr. Bean does get a passive buff against children. You guess he probably, he must be like a 50% damage buff at least. Mr. Bean is a uh, he's quite kid hater. Kids in close combat. Mr. Bean wins even if he wouldn't actually have fucking won. I just uh, fucking hate Manny so much. Uh Mr. Bean versus 1 billion lions. Now here's the thing. Uh Dude, I, a billion lions is a lot of lions, you know what I mean? Very passionate about any sort of question like this that involves lions. My favorite thing to ask people is, who would win an infinite number of lions Okay. the sun? <laughs> the correct answer is uh, the lions. The lions, obviously. obviously. Yeah. Well, the lions would keep burning up in the sun, they will just outlive the sun. They're infinite. True. The sun's gonna explode infinite. in five billion years. Lions have got all the time in the world. Ooh, but uh, wouldn't the hydrogen atoms inside the lions keep fueling the sun so that it keeps getting more powerful and therefore would actually never die? Uh, is yeah, that true? But the lions are infinite and would therefore Facts. outlive true. the death of the universe, including the sun. In Eventually, we'll have the heat death of the universe and the lions will, you know, they're infinity. So there you go. In fact, the lions would keep going beyond that illogically existing in the infinite nothingness of the dead universe. Okay, so let's change the question to <laughs> Mr. Bean versus infinite lions, because that's more interesting. As established, the lions can win against anything, because they're infinite. 
They're sure. just not fucking awesome. But as we yep. also established, Mr. Bean is just as infinite as the lions. And so what happens when an unstoppable force... Well, we don't know that Mr. Bean is infinite. We only know that there are a society of them. A society of Mr. Beans does not mean there is infinite Mr. Beans. A society of ducks does not mean there is infinite ducks. It implies that there is more than one, absolutely, but it does not imply an infinite amount. It's an immovable object. They surrender. No winner. Uh, SCP-3812... God, what the fuck is this? SCP is a fictional universe, but not in the traditional sense that it's created by one or a few people. But I've always wanted to look into SCP because SCP is essentially some weird monsters and the whole universe is built around government reports about these monsters and like what they can do. There's one that, you know, doesn't look, do doesn't move when you look at it. There's some that like send you to another dimension. There's one that like claws out your eyes. There's a lot of different beasts and monsters. I, I don't know what's going on with this. Maybe I'll look into it one day. Instead, anyone can add to it. It's a collaborative writing project, reporting on creepy phenomena, and because it's written by so many people, the narrative is really just what you choose to believe. In this case, SCP-3812 is a mysterious entity of incalculable power, capable of altering reality. Now, the way that it works, or the way I understand it at least, is that 3812 can transcend stacked universes. To explain what, what? this means, uh, let's take the Mr. Bean show. First we have our universe, the okay. real world in which you're watching this YouTube video. Then we have the Mr. Bean universe. This universe is placed under our own because to us, it's fiction. Our universe control- It is a universe created by us. Which means we may be a universe created by something else. the narrative of Mr. Bean's universe. Then let's say Mr. Bean has a show that he likes to watch. That show is a fictional universe within the Mr. Bean universe, so it's placed under it. And then maybe the people in that universe also watch their favourite show and then it keeps going infinitely and infinitely. But how do we know that our universe is at the top? True, sure, we don't know. our point of view, we're real, but from Mr. Bean's point of view, he's real too. So maybe we are a fictional universe that is below another universe, and so on and so on, going infinitely in the other direction. Oh, and this SCP can transcend all of the stacked universes, which means he just goes directly to the top of all of the universes, and then what, does he devour every single universe below it? One, two, can move between these narratives, bend them to its will, and destroy them. So this SCP could go into the Mr. Bean universe, a fictional universe that we have created, except Except since it can go inside the universe, it now becomes a real universe that exists. Even if it's something fictional that we've created, once it is inside of it, it, be it becomes a real thing. That's crazy. Let's say it's fighting Mr. Bean in his universe. Oh, suddenly Mr. Bean is fiction and 3812 is instantly more powerful. It can then travel up the infinite ladder of stacked universes. So if it's fighting God, then it can just ascend to a narrative higher than God. It's a very broken power and a oh. very fucking... Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, let's see fucking Ben 10 fight that bitch, huh? How, how's, how's Ben 10 gonna fight this thing? Finally, found, we found something that can kill Ben 10. Everyone's like, oh, Ben 10, no, no one can beat Ben 10. Y you get owned because this SCP can just enter our universe where Ben 10 is fictional and delete Ben 10. There you go, Ben 10 is dead. Ben 10 loses, finally. Ben 10 loses. It's annoying, actually. If you're debating any fight in which it's involved, it can just go up another level and it wins automatically. It's like that kid in school that, uh, if you were play fighting and you'd hit him with a sword, then he'd say, oh, I have anti-sword armor. If you pour lava on him, then he goes, ooh, I have anti-lava armor, and then you just start bashing his fucking skull in. Okay, so how in the <laughs> flying hell would Mr. Bean beat something some trauma? can supposedly surpass all of fiction? Well, that's just it. Its original author stated on Twitter that 3812 is just a piece of fiction, and canonically, it's however strong or weak as you want it to be. Because at the end of the day, SCP, like any writing or form of art, is whatever you choose to believe. So let me just uh, add an entry to the SCP wiki. Uh, my own character, SCP-081276, that's my birthday. Okay. In the description, right. let's put uh, Mr. Bean. And in abilities, let's write Mr. Bean? SCP-3812. <laughs> How easy was that? Mr. Bean beats... Wait, oh no. We can, oh no, he loses. Superman Wait, you're right. All of no, these other characters because I say he can. After an artist oh, puts no. their art out into the world, it no longer belongs to just them anymore. It's That's the entire point of Saitama from One Punch Man as a character. Saitama just becomes as strong as the opponent that he's fighting and just becomes stronger than him. And Saitama exists to be stronger than the person that he's fighting because he is stronger. And that's how the entire One Punch Man universe is supposed to work. He's just stronger than whatever he's fighting because he just becomes stronger than him. That's not how it works. No, 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 no. That's, that's how it works. That is how it works, all right? And on that note, that was a great video. Mr. Bean can kill Superman. If you want me to react to something, let me know my Discord server.